Yes? Hello, Morris. Surprised to see me. <laughs> All right, you lot, now pay attention. At around 11 o'clock last night, there was a ring at my front door. They never give up, do they, sir? What? Double glazing salesman. <laughs> they never give up. Regrettably, neither do you, Dexter. Just belt up, will you? As I was saying, standing at my door was Marcus Trent, an ex-senior member of this department. To say I was surprised is an understatement, as we had buried him in Vienna nearly 12 years ago. <laughs> was he badly decomposed, sir? <laughs> you know, Dexter, I sometimes wonder if you're not part of a subtle plot by the KGB to undermine this entire department. Just shut up and listen! <laughs> it now seems that Trent's death was staged by the KGB and that he's actually been living in Moscow all this time. So what's he doing back here, sir? He's homesick, Piglet. It often happens, you know. As defectors get older, they find they miss the simple pleasures they left behind. Cricket at Lord's, food from Fortnum, Savile Row suits, a night at Cotton Garden. Yes, I've missed those, too. <laughs> anyway, now he wants to make amends and settle back here. Yes, I'll be. Something to say, Piglet. Well, yes, it's hardly fair, sir, is it? I mean, one minute he's selling his country down the river and the next he's jumped to the top of the council house list. <laughs> Do you think he's genuine, sir? I mean, it could be a wind-up. Well, all I'll say is that he's passed over some very interesting bits and pieces, names of Russian agents, sleepers, and so on. Most of them we know about, but there are one or two surprises, which is why I've called you all here. Now, one of the names that Trent passed on to me as being a senior KGB officer in place is none other than the head of this department, Andrew Maxwell. Maxwell? Yeah, it shook me as well. <laughs> Well, excuse me, sir, isn't there a chance that Trent's just fed us some legit stuff so as we'll believe him when he names Maxwell? Well, yes, of course, that is a possibility. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time it's happened, would it? I mean, it was fairly clearly documented by Peter Wright. <clears throat> I seem to remember in Chapter 7 of Spy Catcher. I didn't hear that, Piglet. <laughs> I said in Chapter 7 of Spy... We do not mention that piece of pulp within these walls, is that clear? <laughs> yes, sir. It's a bit like quoting excerpts from satanic verses in a Muslim temple. <laughs> You don't actually believe that Major Maxwell is guilty, do you, sir? <laughs> oh, good heavens, no, no. But I did what his phone tapped, his mail intercepted, and his house bucked and searched. <laughs> Piglet and Dexter, I want you to take care of that, understood? We'll need a warrant, of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's very, very, very good. <laughs> what is well, a warrant? That's very good, Piglet. <laughs> I also want Maxwell watched day and night. Flint and Lewis, I want you to see where he goes, what he gets up to. Find out if the Russians have got some dirt on him. They may be blackmailing him. Dig into his background. It's been a long while since his last PV. In short, I want this bastard nailed! <laughs> well, I mean, that is if he's guilty, of course. <laughs> That'll do. Uh, matter of interest, sir. What happens if we find out that Maxwell is a Russian mole? Uh, well, I'll probably get his job, his office, and a substantial pay rise. No, I, I meant what would happen to him. Oh, him! <laughs> well, who cares? <clears throat> oh, lovely. I think we all know what he's after. Yeah, well, that's Drummond all over, isn't it? He's been after Maxwell's job for years. It's hardly enough to start a witch hunt on the man, surely. Don't knock it, Pete. I mean, just think. If Maxwell is proved to be a traitor and Drummond gets his job, that leaves a gap. Yeah. What? what do you mean, me? No, I haven't been here long enough, surely. Actually, old son, I was rather thinking about me. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, come on, Dexter. Making you head of department, that's like making Stevie Wonder your chauffeur. <laughs> Why? Can't he drive? <laughs> oh. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Major Maxwell. Something wrong? No, of course not, sir. Comrade? Shh. <laughs> Sorry. Nothing. Um, something we can do for you, sir? Yes, I've just been reading your brief analysis of the new Corona F41 laser sight. 
You seem very impressed with it. Yes, sir, I am. I just popped into your office to take a gander at the detailed evaluation. I, mean, I couldn't find it. You have it? Um, well, yes. Only I want to show it to one or two people. People? Yes, some people who are interested in technical information of this sort. I see. Well, do you have it? I'm afraid not. Ah, oh, what a pity. Yes, bit of a wasted journey for you, sir. Yeah, so where is it? Um, well, let me see. <laughs> uh, I appear to have it, sir. <laughs> Why won't you come out with me? Because you're juvenile, sexist, dogmatic, and as obvious as hell. Uh, you can't think of anything, can you? <laughs> you could come back to my place and share my bed. I have a bed of my own, thank you, Lewis. All right, we'll share that. I don't think so. Go on. You might enjoy it. Look, how can I put this without hurting your feelings? I would rather cuddle up to a boa constrictor. Well, suit yourself. Not the same as a man, though, is it? Neither are you, Lewis. <laughs> Hello. Here we go. Did he pass something? Is it that newspaper seller? He might have done. We'll run a check on him later. Let's go and suss out what he's been doing over the road. The dirty sod. <laughs> Under the bed. Oh, well, it's all down to training and years of experience. It becomes a sort of sixth sense, and it led me right to this very spot. Mind you, it helped that your feet were sticking out. <laughs> what are you doing in here, anyway? You're supposed to be keeping watch from the van. Nah, I got bored. Anyway, Maxwell won't be back for ages. No problems getting in, then? No, no, I climbed up the oak tree, onto the garage roof, then up the drain pipe, in through the toilet window. You? Back door was open. <laughs> so, what have you been doing, then? Well, I put the micro camera behind the TV screen downstairs, and there's a couple of bugs up here. Hmm. Do you find anything interesting in your travels? Anything that might suggest that he could be Soviet controlled? What do you mean, apart from the statue of Lenin in the hall and the doorbell that chimes the red flag? No. <laughs> Dear, this is a nice bed, isn't it? Oh, this brings back some memories, this does. <laughs> you slept with Maxwell's wife? <laughs> no. You haven't slept with Maxwell. <laughs> Don't be daft. Now, this is the same as the bed me and the wife had when we first got married. Oh, I see. Oh, oh. Happy day. Yeah. Oh, it's a shame he didn't last. Yeah. So when did things start to go wrong? At the wedding reception. <laughs> she came at me with a knife. You're not serious? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, what could I do? I had no choice. I broke her arm, got the knife off her. <laughs> it was all a huge misunderstanding. She... <laughs> Only wanted me to help her cut the cake. <laughs> He's back. So what do we do? Uh, I don't know. Um, hide, quick. Where? <laughs> <laughs> hide, he says, quick. So we both dive into Maxwell's wardrobe. Three hours we were in there because some dopey cat knocked a vase over. I only reacted like that because I knew Maxwell didn't own a cat. Well, he owns five now, thanks to you leaving the back door open. <laughs> he said, Dexter, being trapped in a wardrobe with you is not one of life's little highlights. Well, same for me, too. Well, at least I hadn't had a curry. <laughs> What's the earth know about the damage you're doing to the ozone layer? Cut it out, you two. We're here to watch Maxwell. 
God knows why. I think the whole operation's a waste of time. Well, I mean, I can't see Maxwell being a double at all. Oh, is this based on inside information or your unrivaled experience in the security services? Oh, it's just a gut feeling. You should know all about those. <laughs> I just think it's wrong to condemn someone based on a few circumstantial bits and pieces. I mean, the fact is, if you think a bloke is guilty, then everything he does looks suspicious. Well, this looks suspicious. I'm sorry, Emily. Quite all right, but I can't stay long. This is for you. Thank you. And I don't think you'll be disappointed in what I brought for you. Innocent. That other bloke's probably just a good friend of his. Well, he probably is. Trouble is, he's Viktor Salakov, and he works at the Soviet Embassy. This is good. Oh, this is very good. He's been an active little mole, hasn't he? <laughs> well, do you think it's really conclusive, sir? Well, short of him wearing a badge which reads, I heart the KGB, I think so. <laughs> it's certainly enough to get him suspended. Well, isn't that exactly what Marcus Trent wants? Well, that's not how the evidence points. You see, there's a meeting with Sadikov, the visit to the lady in Frith Street for a bit of horizontal jogging. The sudden interest in the laser side, plus several other covered liaisons, all point to Trent's information being accurate. Yes, well, I don't think you can call buying an evening standard and a bar of chocolate a covered liaison. Yeah, well, all right, we'll scrub those, but there's certainly enough, especially with the 50,000 pounds. What 50,000 pounds? The 50,000 pounds that has suddenly appeared in Maxwell's bank account. Really? And you think that's a payoff from the Russians? I do. They pay well, don't they? Don't even think about it. <laughs> it's certainly enough to justify getting Maxwell in for an interview. Now, just watch and learn. What's this all about, Morris? Andrew, my dear fellow. Am I to be interrogated? Interrogated is such an emotive word. How can I put it? One or two questions? Do sit down. Am I under suspicion of something? My dear fellow, whatever gave you that idea? <laughs> because I'm being followed by Lewis and Flint. Oh, surely not. It's the worst job of surveillance I've ever seen. Short of them sitting down to dinner with me, it couldn't have been more obvious. <laughs> Why am I being tailed? Um... Well, there's a perfectly sound explanation for that. Tell him, Piglet. Uh, protective surveillance, sir. We heard a rumour that your life may be in danger. I see. So why is my telephone tapped? <laughs> tapped? Oh, well, it's, it's, it's not by one of us, Andrew. No? The last time I picked up the receiver, all I could hear was Dexter talking to his mother. <laughs> I want some answers, Morris. Why is my house bugged? Why is my mail being intercepted? In short, why am I being vetted? Um, 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 uh. Well, you've certainly got him rattled, sir. <laughs> well, that was impressive, wasn't it? Yeah. I've never seen Drummond cry before. <laughs> Well, he was getting nothing out of the old man, was he? I suppose that would be Maxwell's KGB training, will it? Resisting subtle interrogation. Subtle? Drummond grabbed him by the lapels and shouted, for God's sake, Andrew, are you a spy? <laughs> I still reckon the old man is for the chop. Yeah. You don't really think he's guilty, do you? Personally, no. But Drummond has got the scent of promotion in his nostrils. Yeah, but some of the stuff he was confronting him with was about as believable as a headline in the sun. <laughs> no, it's Marcus Trent we ought to be talking to. You reckon? Yes, I do. Do you know where he is? Yeah, he's in a safe house in South London. Do you know where? No, but I could find out. It'd be on the notice board. <laughs> is he likely to be under guard? No. From what I gather, Drummond doesn't think it's necessary. Why, what you've got in mind? 
I just think we ought to keep an eye on Mr. Trent. Find out where he goes, see if he meets anyone. You want for that? Yeah, well, if you think it'll help the old man, why not? But you'd better be right. I'll get us a taxi. Oh, don't be silly. We can't afford a taxi. No, not to hire, to drive. We keep a couple of them down the garage for surveillance work. Oh, what a great idea. Yes, yeah, so that way you can do U-turns in the middle of the road, park wherever you want, <laughs> and carve up all the other traffic without looking out of place. <laughs> and if you get skint, you can always do a bit of moonlighting with it. <laughs> what? Come on. How long do you think we ought to wait? Give it another half hour, eh? It's boring, this sort of work, isn't it? Yeah, you get used to it. Here, do you fancy a game of I Spy? No, thanks. <laughs> hey, I've got a question for you. Huh? In the Alfred Hitchcock film, Rebecca, right? Who played the title role? Who's Alfred Hitchcock? <laughs> hello, hello. Unless I'm very much mistaken, here comes Trent. We're off. Here we go. Well, don't put the meter on. <laughs> Sorry, I was just getting into the part. Andrew, my dear fellow, I'm absolutely thrilled and delighted that you've been exonerated. Really? I always knew you were innocent. I never believed that swine Trent for a single moment. Everything he did smacked of duplicity. Oh, thank you, Morris. It's always nice to know who one's friends are in a crisis. Oh, I was always there right behind you. <laughs> With a knife. <laughs> well, Chapman, it seems I owe you a vote of thanks. I'm grateful for your trust. It won't be forgotten. Well... Yes, but I trusted you too, Andrew. I mean, don't forget that. I always knew you'd be back. Really? Then why is there a picture of your family on my desk? <laughs> oh, I wondered where that had gone. Do forgive me. I'm so sorry. Uh, so, without wishing to pry or anything, the, uh, the girl in Frith Street? The French lessons? Yes. 
Well, it's perfectly simple. I'm learning French. Why, what did you think? Well, it's just that Lewis followed you in and was gone for two and a half hours. <laughs> Obviously, he went to the wrong floor. He didn't seem to think so. <laughs> well, you see, I'm learning the lingo because I'm in the process of buying a little weekend cottage in France for when I retire. Oh, isn't that lovely? When will that be, Andrew? <laughs> and the meeting in the park with the Russian chap? Oh, nothing untoward there. He's a cultural attaché. He gave me two tickets for the Bolshoi. I gave him two tickets for Twickenham, the varsity match. I would have thought he could have got his own tickets. Number of people the Russians have got at Cambridge. Yes, all right. <laughs> Thank you. That's, that's anyway, everything's been simply explained away. <laughs> Including the £50,000? Yes. My wife drew some money from a trust to pay for our French cottage. If somebody had bothered to check, they would have found it all detailed. Yes, but it's all over now, thank goodness. I mean, Trent skipped back to the bosom of Mother Russia and Andrew's back in the office at the helm, right where he belongs. Hip, hip. That'll do, Piglet. <laughs> I'm telling you, Dex, it's a real worry. What is? Talking in me sleep. I mean, Flint will tell you. Oh, ha, ha. Keep your grubby little fantasies to yourself. No, but I am worried, Dex. I've been nattering away like a good'un every night. You sure it is you? Hey? <laughs> Well, I mean, if you're asleep, there's always a chance it could be somebody else. <laughs> of course it's me. Apparently, the other night, I kept saying, Deborah, Deborah, over and over again. What did the wife say to that? Well, luckily, I wasn't with her. I was with Penny. <laughs> but the problem's still there. Pathetic. Well, hello. Well, who's a blue-eyed boy, then? Oh, yes. Well, thank you, fans. No, please hold back those press men. No autographs. That's one thing I've always admired about you, Pete. Your modesty. Well, look, when you've single-handedly... Oi! All right, when you've double-handedly cleared the reputation of the head of the department... Yeah, yeah, all right, all right. Well, better get started. Uh, what are you doing? Well, as a little reward for my initiative, Maxwell has awarded me a new office on the sixth floor with two windows. Hey, my name didn't crop up at all, did it? Yes, it did. Oh! Something about finding a home for five cats. <laughs> <laughs> oh, blimey. What are you all loitering in my office for, anyway? Just waiting to share in your moment of triumph. Oh, and to return the cassettes of the tap of Maxwell's phone. Oh, right, we'll just stick them in the box. Right? Uh, any of those guys spare? Yeah, help yourself. They're no use to me. Oh, well, no, actually, I want to check them first. Three eight seven five four. Yeah, that's Maxwell. I understand you were having a few problems. Yes, it's been a bit hairy. Things are getting a bit difficult here. Like always, get you out. I don't know. I need time. Look, I can't talk now. I'll be in touch. <laughs> 